children's. Linda's the name of the mother of my children. Her name is Linda. And her sister and my brother were boyfriend and girlfriend, so this Linda came along and I always flirted with her. You know, I always kind of like flirted with her and teased her. And, well, she asked me what I wanted for my birthday and we have three kids. It's the best way I can say it. Did you tell her you want three kids for your birthday? No, but that's what ended up happening. Um, I never married her. Um, unfortunately, she passed away in 2002, and I was there. I mean, I've already been, I was already remarried by this time, but I was at the hospital all the time. I held her hand. I talked to her. I let her know that, you know, I'll take care of our babies. You know, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and go to a better place. I'll take care of our babies, and I've tried to do my best. Um, you know, and I still do. Although all my children are adults. I have a daughter who just got out of jail, and I worry about her constantly, but she's 26 and she's a little bit too old to take over my knee anymore. I have a son who's 24 who actually has two children of his own and he is doing pretty well for himself. I have a son who's 20 who has a brand new baby daughter, six, eight years old, um, which is gorgeous by the way, and I'm proud of him. He's He's focused on doing what's right. Uh, he knows that he, uh, he's focused on being a good father. And I'm not saying he got any of that from me, but I've never been a horrible father. I've never been, an, I never abandoned my issues. Child support's one thing, but the love and the physical and personal support was different, you know. If I have $20, my kids need 10 I'm going to give it to them. Your children are all legal adults. Yes. And the My youngest is twenty, he'll be twenty one in July. The mother of your children is no longer alive. And she passed away on February third, two thousand and two. How much money exactly do you owe in child support? Oh I don't know exactly, but it's in the range of twenty five to twenty five to thirty thousand dollars. So Twenty-five to thirty thousand in between there. Right. The mother is no longer alive. Right. Your children are adults. This past support is what they call it. Who are you paying support to? I don't. I'm not paying nobody. I just gave up. Who are you supposed to pay it to? Uh, the county of Ramsey. I'm supposed to pay thirty dollars a month, and I still get little bills for thirty thousand dollars. I do thirty dollars a month, but my kids are adults. And their lives, I've done my job. I'm hoping I don't get thrown in jail. Because you owe this child support, your current wife is being solicited to pay. Yeah, they, for this. They'll, 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 when she files taxes, they'll take her state tax. And then I have to go and fill out paperwork and do this and that, and then. After I do all this, they actually give it back to her because it's called um, an injured, injured spouse. So, and they, but it happens every year, and it's just uh, it's just bullshit, is what it is. But I mean, I always get it back every year. I we do this is like the third year that it's happened, mm -hmm. and so we go down and file an injured spouse claim. I take it to my child support worker person. And in about a week or so, she actually gets it back. But it's always, you know, it, 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 it's always just hoovering over our heads. I never, I actually, about once every three months or so, I'll call to make sure I don't have a warrant for me because of child support. Because that'd be the only thing that would pop up on me because I don't commit crimes. Tell us about your... Except for maybe drinking out the <laughs> Tell us about your um, military service. I was in the military... I joined in uh, summer of 1977. I joined the Army. Um, I did my basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. I did my AIT, which is Advanced Individual Training, and some other states I don't remember right now. And then they sent me to Germany, 
I was in Germany for about six months. At the time, I was only a 17, 18 year old punk kid who got, realized I was 10,000 miles from home and I got homesick. I seen these other people getting kicked out for shooting heroin. I thought, well, hell, I can do that. So I purposely did. I mean, I, I purposely shot heroin and let them know I was doing it, so they would kick me out. And it worked. And they gave me an honorable discharge with what they call a chapter nine. I probably can't have, I probably could go to get married, I probably couldn't get buried at Fort Snelling be, you know, because of this chapter thing. You know, they're not going to play taps over my grave. You know, fuck it, my son can whistle taps. It's not that big of a deal. Tell us about uh, hepatitis. Ah, uh, what years now? About two years ago, I decided I was going to try it really hard to quit smoking. So I went and had a complete physical. And they took blood. And, and they, took, they, they took 16 vials of blood. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Well, as you just cut my arm, it'd be easier. But anyway, but I was real serious about quitting smoking. I was going to do it. And, I don't know, three, four weeks later, I got a letter in the mail saying I had hepatitis C. So, you know, why bother quit smoking now? I just got a death sentence as far as I'm concerned. So, I didn't quit smoking and I have hepatitis C. Then I, I went and seen these specialists and this and that. And one of them was like, you know, if you go to treatment for six months, come back, you know, we'll work on, you know, a cure or this and that. Again, every time I turn around, people are... They want to get involved in my drinking. Well, I'm going to drink till I die. Everybody, everybody I ever loved has drank till they die. Why the hell would I be different? I got, everybody I've ever loved. You want to start with my sisters. They were both drunk when they hung themselves. Both my sisters hung themselves. My oldest sister was like a mother to me. I mean, see, when I was little and we were in foster homes, she was always, she made sure I was always with her. She was, she was very close to me. Her name was Peggy and I miss her. But she hung herself on April 19th, 1997. And my younger sister, for some reason, decided to follow suit on August 10th, 1997. So I, no sooner did I bury one than I had to go around, turn around and take care of the other one. And before this, in 1994, a brother of mine who I was very close with died of a brain aneurysm. So they found him dead in his apartment two or three days after he was dead. So we couldn't have like an open, cost, an open coffin casket or anything like that. So I was never able to really say goodbye at that point. You know, apparently after you lay there dead for a couple of days, they can't embalm you or nothing like that. They have to, do it from the outside. So I couldn't do that. My most recent tragedy, and it is, I lost my brother Jeff the same months ago. And, um, Pretty much why I'm in the situation I'm in.